This is one of my favorite types of projects, actually, Randall, it's because it uses a little math. You know, a lot of times when you're doing dirt work projects, there's no math involved. All you do is just brute force. Well, we're back at the church camp today and we're going to do some laser work. We got another drainage issue. They loved the work we did last year. You can go back and check out that video. They loved it so much that they invited us back again. Of course, given that it's free, that helps too. Let's get started. By far the hardest part of any of these projects on this type of, of ground is figuring out what you need to do. It's flat here, and it's so flat that it's a problem. Now, what's happened is, is that over the years there's been buildings put in, some of the natural drainage has just been altered in some way a little bit. So we've spent already maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half with our laser trying to go around and figure out exactly what we needed to do to keep water from inundating these buildings. You can see that they've recently put some dirt up against the sides and quite frankly that may have solved the problem on its own. But they get big rains here once in a while. Like last year they had a nine inch rain. Rain like that is going to cause serious flooding and so what we're going to do here is we're going to create another swale. You've seen us do it in the past with our laser box blade. We're going to go around all three of these buildings. We're going to dig this down three tenths of a foot just to make sure that we have a good spot for those gutters to drain out into. And then we're going to drain both ways from that. We're letting Tom get it all tilled up nice and smooth and hopefully we can take our laser box blade in here once we do the math and be done in time for lunch so I can get a cheeseburger. It's a little hard to go through numbers and stuff on camera and video. It's, um, it's, it's just gets a little bit confusing. But I'm gonna give you an overview. This is the exit point of our little uh, swale or ditch that we're gonna be digging. So we've decided that this is the grade, the final grade that we want it to be right here. You can see we've got green lines here. We are dialed in with the laser at this point. We have put in three tenths of a foot. By the way, I'm gonna say an aside that uh, I, I have one of the linker sticks that reads in inches, and then I got this one that reads in tenths of a foot. I much prefer the tenths of a foot. It makes the math so much easier. So if you haven't got a linker rod, get one that reads uh, tenths of a foot. Second thing is I got a 15 foot one. Um, it's a fancy uh, linker, rod that linker rod that has the um, uh, adjustable up and down cut and fill lines. Just get a 10 footer. The 15 footer will not fit in my truck. It's awkward. It just won't get small enough. So you do want a larger or a shorter linker rod. I assumed 15 would be better than 10. Okay, that was bonus material for free. In the 100 feet that we have between the middle of that second cabin and here, we're gonna try to put about three tenths of a foot of drop. And we're gonna try to cut about three tenths there. So we have done the calculations, three tenths of a foot over 100 feet is 0.3%. And then we're gonna cut three tenths there before we start that drop because we wanna, that's, that's how we wanna create just a small swale here. In this case, we did the math and it worked perfectly. We entered it into the laser and we didn't have any issue. Randall has got another approach. Randall's approach is that he actually puts the linker stick where he wants it on this end and then he just, we're using the laser's remote, he dials in the slope until it hits it. The lazy man way with no math. Well, I kind of like math, so I did the math way, but either way, we'll end up where you want it to end up. We proved that, didn't we, Randall? It worked, right on the money. Okay. I may need another hand. Not just a talker. <laughs> now, what are we doing here? Because you can see that we've got green. Well, we're a little uh, concerned up. Up, a quarter of an inch or half. We're, I just went a quarter, I think. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. There you go, that's real close right We're there. We're a little concerned that the box blade is not sitting level here, so we'd rather have uh, measured the, each end of the box blade to be consistent rather than just reading a green line on both sides. Okay, Randall, you told me that you wanted stoppers for this. Just to keep it from picking the wheels way up off the ground. Yep, and by doing that, when the laser wants to move, it moves the box immediately. Yeah, this was this was a, a something that Randall figured out when we were on, on our last job. We would get to where the it was too deep, but 
the system was too slow to respond. Well, it wasn't the system, it was the wheels would be tick, 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 and they would finally hit the ground. But by that time, the box had dug in way too deep. So I don't know how much we want that, Randall. I've got well, some choices. Well, we might need to adjust that once we get going to see how much it's carrying them. Let's do at least a small one here. At least this much, don't you think? Because we're sitting... I would say it needs to be probably at least tight there. And the tilt right now is set into flat mode. Okay. So I may leave it like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I may want to take one of them out. Just yeah. so as it don't pull the wheel way up and then it takes it too long. It's, the system's trying to, well, it, to level it. It'll, it'll actually never let it get below level right now. So, well, maybe it will. I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. We'll see where it comes up. Last year I brought the 1025R. And then we ended up cutting about, I don't know, two feet deep. It's the only tractor I had wired up at the time to run this box blade. This time I brought the big 3R and we only need to cut that much. So the 1025R would have been much handier. You just going to raise up and dump it right there? You have a job now, Tom. Move a dirt? Dirt transport. Okay. This 3R just toys with this box blade. Whereas the 1025R, it was, you know, it was a hard pull. But by pre-tilling, it's still, you know, it still worked. Second trip through and I'm almost a grade already. The issue is we're not, it's gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna take a long time to trap that dirt. I'm almost we, done. Okay. You got the grade already here? Almost, yeah. Hey, can you, on my tilt side, can you remove one of my stops? And put, and put that stop on the tilt, yeah, on the tilt hose. So I remember which one goes there. Yeah, there's two of them up there. It was the skinnier one. I don't have a half a bucket full. I'm running both systems now, the tilt and the height, and they fight against each other somewhat. So that's a little bit harder job for me. I'll take a look and see why it's banging down over here. Ah, the tilt wheel is totally off the ground, but it just can't dig in that much. So that's, that's gonna happen. This field out here, as, as you could see, was not mowed at all. And, and we, we really thought we were gonna have to work out there and we still may, but Tyler, the uh, camp manager, camp director, whatever his title is, he made it, sent out a couple of text messages, and yeah, you can see what happened here. 20 foot flex wing mower, huge tractor, mowing at probably five or six miles an hour. This camp gets a lot of support, and for good reason. I mean, this is a, an incredible organization. They're, they're doing incredible work to train the next generation, and they're not just focused on fun here. It is a fun time for the kids, but there's a lot of education that goes on. I'm maintaining grade while even talking to you about something else. This is pretty cool. You can hear it banging, but it's legitimately cutting. With that left-hand side, yeah, you, it was it was legitimate. This thing's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. That hopping that you see is when the two systems fight each other. I can deal with that in the long term by only using one system at a time. Once I get this really close, I'll just turn off the tilt system. There'll be no need for it. 
see the bare spot up there? Yeah. Can you tell that again? That pre-tilling helps a lot. Stay out of the middle. Stay totally to the side. Try to leave the middle totally alone. Okay, I was running my wheel in the middle. Yeah, which is digging a hole in some places, right? Because okay. of the way the slope works. Make me a ditch just a little bit and you can do it. I'll show you how to do it. Bring your bring your Vinny in here. Go crossways with it. Go crossways, put her down just a little bit and zip 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 zip. Do you would you like to do it? No. Okay. I want you to zip 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 right. zip zip. I'll I'll do my best impression of that. <laughs> <laughs> just don't dig a hole here, right? Right. Just cut the hump out in between. Yeah. Yeah. Just drive up and do it again. Don't even turn the thing around. Stop. Just do it again. Faster. There you go. That's it. Okay, we're starting on this other side. The way I try to use the laser, I want to use just a single dimension. I don't want to try to confuse with X and Y coordinates. And we've got a little curve here. So I just kind of simplify that by making an, a line in my, in my head that covers all of it. I'm not actually running the laser now. I did up at the beginning, but now that I've got a box full, I'm just trying to drag it out to the end. This is the advantage of the 3046R. I can pull a much bigger box full of stuff. That would have taken several trips with the 1025R. You know, if you're using this system only a couple of times a year, and you've got a 1025R, that'll be fine. But if you intend to use it on an ongoing basis, I, I think going to a larger tractor would make a lot of sense. At least a large frame 2R or 3E, and really preferably a 3R. It pulls so much more than the 2R 3E. Someday I'm gonna show you that and prove it. I had my cheeseburger for lunch. I feel much better now. Now, not just any cheeseburger. The local restaurant here has a five patty cheeseburger. I guess my blade's already full. I know I'm full. I find this to be an enormous amount of fun. Hate to admit it. My blade's full, right? Left no, side's really trying good. to go down. I need and some it's more picking. tilling right there. Right. Hear me, I'm trying to go down, so get, get, get some tilling job there. Okay. Each pass through I get just a little further along when I can stay on grade. And then it finally gets full and I can't stay on grade anymore. So that's just kind of the way I, I work it through a little bit at a time. Now, got a lot of questions, some questions about the jerkiness of the blade. And, you know, is, is there a fix to that? Well, there is some fix to some part of it. The two systems kind of conflict with each other. So if you're using only the lift lower system, you'll have a better luck. And that's what I do until I get to finish grade. And then I finally turn them both on. 
and that's the major issue that I, that I deal with. The second issue is the laser itself, there's a couple of blind spots actually that, that hold up the lid of the laser. And if you get in one of those blind spots, the receivers can't see the laser. Sort of like I can't see you right now, right? This Kubota, I think it's an L3400, belongs to the camp. Randall's using it to get rid of some of this excess dirt. We found some wet spots, some holes out here. He's filling those up. I think we did a good thing here. I think it'll be a lot easier for him to mow going forward. This box blade comes from C5 MFG. You have to call them. You can't just order it online. But when you call them, you mention Tractor Time with Tim, and they'll give you a discount. When it comes to grade work like this, nothing beats a pull-tight box blade. It's hard to do good grade work with a three-point mounted blade. I'm using the Power Beyond Connected Summit Hydraulic Kit that I've shown repeatedly on this channel. But I should mention that if you're only wanting to use one laser system on the Deer 3R or 3X20 and just up and down, no tilt, you can use the Deer built-in third function kit. It uses the exact same connectors that the Summit Kit does, so you can plug the laser kit right in. In the middle of one of those veins right now, so this is where I'm losing, I lose signal just a little bit here. And the only way I can find to deal with that is to turn it off automatic until I get beyond that vein. Then I can turn it back on. And there's really nothing I think I can do about it because that vein is in the, is, is in the, the plastic of the laser head. Uh, both brands of lasers that I have have them and it's no big deal when you're doing this by hand. It's only a big deal when, when I want to consistently view that laser through the entire 360 degrees or in this case you know, 90 degrees or more. We're getting close now on this section of the swale. And at this point, I think we've actually achieved our goal. I believe water is going to be kept away from the three cabins there without any issue at all. However, talking with Tyler and doing some laser work of our own, we could realize that there was kind of a pond area or a place where water stands out there in front of the tractors. We had made so much progress so quickly that we decided to take this on as an additional project. We have the equipment here. We have the time. We might as well see if we can fix some broader problem. This is going to entail moving a lot more dirt, so I'm trying to see if I can get a bucket full and a blade full at the same time. It just doesn't work very well trying to get a bucket full. That blade is so much easier. We're at least doubling the overall distance that we had first tackled, and for part of it, we have to go a good bit deeper. I think we've created somewhere around 600 feet of swale here. We've got a lot more dirt to move, but we'll get it knocked out fairly quickly. In our next episode, we'll show you what's left of the project. We've got to smooth it all out better, fertilize it, seed it, put some straw on it, and yeah, probably have some fun along the way too. So join us for our next next episode. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. I need you to be my bucket level indicator. I'm missing it. Are you kidding? Oh, I see it. Trust it says me. bucket level indicator. At I least see it, it did. Yeah, yeah. It's... That's just as good. That's what all the orange guys tell me. Okay, until I have to use it. <laughs> well, you, you can use that to relate it to the ground, but there is no precision in that. It'll tell you within five or six inches. Yeah. <laughs>